Okay, I thought I'd just show you a little bit about the process of planning for a flight. And I actually have sort of a FAA Part 107 commercial flight scheduled for the weekend. So I thought I would show you and create the flight plan with you while you're watching. As you can see, I went to the AirMap app, uh, which is a pretty helpful app. It shows me a lot of different things. It's currently showing you where I am right now at home. And if you look down there at the green triangle, it would show me any advisories or things. Um, if I happen to be in airspace that required authorization, or there was a temporary flight restriction or flying over a prison or some other situation like that. As you can see, there's no advisories here. Um, but let's look up my flight location because it's good. It saved it there for me. It's not at home. It is at the VFW fairgrounds. So let me hold my finger down those three buildings that's sort of the area where we're gonna fly and I don't know exactly how much I want to cover I'm going to extend the flight area uh, that should do it but there's no harm in extending it a little bit more that's good and, oops, it asks what my mission is. Ah, that app keeps doing that to me. That menu down there is too close to the bottom and it makes you leave. Um, part 107, because uh, it's not a hobbyist flight, I do potentially want to make some money on the video at some point. Um, there's no advisories there, which is good. I didn't anticipate there would be, but you never know. Um, it's good to check your area. Uh, let's click Next. And I'm going to max out my altitude. 400 feet is what I'm allowed to fly. <coughs> and date and time. It's going to be on Saturday morning. Let's just say we're going to meet at 10 a.m. Let's, yeah, 10, 10 a.m. And duration. Let's make it two hours. Pilot and aircraft, you can see there's already set up there. Going to be flying my Spark. Are you interested in insurance? No. Maximum speed. Those are all set. I played with these a little bit earlier. Uh, does the drone have anti-collision lighting? Yes. I'm not going to be flying in a time frame or a situation that's going to need anti-collision lighting but I have it and it stays on the drone pretty much so I might as well say yes that I do have it and it's not a big deal to turn it on even if I don't technically need it yes it's within visual line of sight the drone is registered I have obtained a part 107 certification And this is nice. It gives me my flight briefing. Uh, especially my little spark. It's sort of sensitive to wind. Um, two mile per hour wind is not a problem at all. Uh, but if it was above 13 miles per hour, I would say, um, I might start questioning whether I really want to fly. But wind is good. Visibility is pretty much maxed out. It usually maxes at 10. Temperature is a little cold. Um, it's above freezing, though. It's 
it's borderline um, two point okay it's not yeah it's gonna be okay so and it says no airspace authorization is available that really just means none is needed it's in class G airspace um, I don't really need to apply for anything and I technically I don't even need to be doing this this doesn't even go to the FAA um, because there's nothing about this flight that makes me need to ask them for any special permission that I don't already have so we will submit the flight my flight has been my flight plan has been submitted to airmap no airspace authorizations have been requested on your behalf um, that would be a whole different animal if that were the case um, if I needed to get into airspace that's actually class C or class B or something uh, I can actually authorize I there are sections where you can uh, you can get the authorization almost immediately uh, and the sections where you can't um, I wouldn't be able to fly there because it would be a long waiver process or authorization process of submitting the paperwork to the FAA but uh, now if we check let's go tap flights takes a while to refresh there we go now there's my my planned flight for Saturday and that's how that works